as I sit here and I think about what is behind me, I think I've probably already lost some viewers because of this. <laughs> Time to start. Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review. No time to dilly dally, let's get into it. This book review is about Geraldine's books, A Year of Wonders. Now this is her first fiction novel. Uh, she was an ex-foreign correspondent, <laughs> foreign correspondent, and uh, this is the first book that, that she's written on the Plague Village. Now, Geraldine Brooks had found out about this plague village of the 1600s. It's a village called Eames in the UK. And what this village did was it quarantined itself from the time of the plague, the bubonic plague. And so this story is really a loose, loosely based story on that real life plague village. Now, we come across the character of Anne, who's an 18-year-old. She's got uh, a husband and she's got two young children and she's in this mining village. And we see her as a very young, innocent, kind of at times naive woman of her times, which is to be expected, I guess. But as the story unfolds, she comes into herself. She becomes a lot more confident and assertive and actually starts helping the villagers. Now what happens in this story is the rector of the village, um, Michael Montpellion, who is well liked, decides to say to the people in one of his sermons one day that in order to stop the plague, they need to quarantine the entire village away from the rest of the world. And so of course you could understand the villagers, some liked it, some didn't. But he put the question to them, and they all decided that in order for them to survive in the long run and actually do a good service for the rest of the community and the rest of the country, that they would have to quarantine for however long to get this disease under control. They knew it was a disease, but they didn't know how it was spread. Later, we do know that it was spread by the fleas of the rats. And these fleas were actually brought in by some material that was brought into the village from some of the cloth makers. And indeed, this is the aspect right at the start of the book where Anne brings in a lodger who happens to be a cloth maker and that's where it all began. Although I didn't understand that that's where the root of the plague would have started when I read this book. I had to really investigate that afterwards when I did the research on this particular village. So anyway, the rector decides to have everyone quarantine the village and the only communication to the outside world was the boundary stone where they would leave notes as to what food um, and what things that the villagers needed that were brought in from the outside. So what they did was a very, I guess, selfless act to be able to do this and know that they were going to face some really hard times and boy, did they face some hard times. When the village closed off, that's where human true nature came out. And we saw all kinds, everything from just beautiful acts of people helping each other to people not helping each other, actually uh, actually dealing with this grief, dealing with um, grief of having to see their entire families wiped out by the plague and also the knowledge of why is this happening to them? Why is it happening to their village? And as you can understand, the time of 1600, 1660s, it, this was actually in 1665, it was a period of restoration. So it meant that their world was actually moving away from the Puritan thoughts to more expansion ideas of what was happening around the world, medicine and so forth. And so they're actually at, at the at the crux of changing, uh, I guess, changing their worldview. And so we saw some people who still held on to the idea that it was their fault, that it was the results of their sins that God put this plague on them. And so how they would deal with it would be they would self-flagellate or they would feel as if and pick on other people in the village they didn't understand because they were at, at fault. They thought that they were at fault. Meanwhile, there were the others who, like Michael Montpellier, like his wife, and even like the character Anne, 
who through time began to understand that it's not really God's place. It wasn't a, an act of God. It was something else that they didn't understand and it was up to them to kind of rise above it and deal with it. So Anne herself learnt the trade, I guess, of the herb, herbalists and botanicals from two of the women in the village. And of course, these two women were thought of as witches by the others because they didn't understand, you know, they didn't have husbands, they didn't have uh, children. So naturally, villagers would assume the worst in them um, and they would think them witches. But she kind of put that aside and she used to fight her own I guess stereotype her own ideas to try and bring in and understand uh, understand her world a bit better and as she did so she was becoming a lot more accepting of it and we see her unfolding in the sense of that she starts becoming confident and self-assured and helping people and kind of like helping them see right there are certain passages in the book that I actually cringed because she brought up some really kind of disgusting, awful, horrible images of what people can do to each other and could even could do to their children. It, yeah, but the way that the it's written, it's actually beautifully written. I've not read a book like this because it's the voice of someone who is in the 1600s, so it's it's written unlike what you would see or read books of today and I I wonder about Geraldine Brooks having to have been in situations as a foreign correspondent and seen all sorts of different things and seen the best and the worst of human nature and I wonder sometimes if that have somehow been brought into the stories in this book but it is really beautifully written and it's as I was reading it, it actually made me think about my situation here. I mean, we're in Melbourne. We are currently still in lockdown and we've been in lockdown what it seems to me like months. Well, we've been in lockdown since March anyway. Although we haven't quarantined ourselves, we've done something similar. We've locked our borders in Victoria. We can't go out. And similarly, we were in a lockdown. We still are in a lockdown where we can't go beyond five kilometres to our home and we can only meet one other person for an hour a day sorry now it's two hours a day so we do have some freedoms to go out but these people actually locked themselves entirely in their own village and they were there to fend for themselves for however long it took it it took and so what they did was a an incredibly selfless act for other other people but knowing at huge great expense that they're in entire families would be wiped out in the village and a lot of people wouldn't make it. So Geraldine Brooks, A Year of Wonders, this would be a great uh, book club book. It would be interesting, especially at this time of COVID lockdown and also see see what else can come, come through with this. One of the things I didn't understand about this book though, I feel as if it's kind of like two books in one, around 250 odd pages where we actually see Anne growing growing up as a person, developing as a person, being really confident. Then she takes a turn where she starts to have an affair with uh, Montpellier and I feel as if I lost it there. I, I, I lost the flow of the book and even though, and it seemed to just go by so so quickly. I feel as if the book could have been finished a lot earlier than it was. Uh, we didn't need to didn't need to know about the affair. Like the affair was something additional. It's like, oh crap, I didn't have any romance in this. Let's just put the romance in and you know be done with it. But even that, when I think about the romance, it actually brings out another aspect of the other character that we didn't come across, and that was a real twist in in the story as well. So maybe it was deliberate. Maybe it, it was there for us to start questioning that sometimes who we think is right might not be right. Who we think, that, uh, uh, who we think a person being of value or respectable to us is not really the case. So that's it. A Year of Wonders. Be really interested to know if you have read this book or if you've read any of other Geraldine Brooks books as well. Since then, she has written a few, as you can see here. They're, they're all in the back there. I've not read any of her other books. Would I read some more of them? Yes, I would. It, yes, I would, definitely. 
So there you go, a year of wonders. Okay then, bye for now.